Hi, this is Kim Pinkney and welcome to my channel. I am, uh, yesterday I had done the uh, moon on this sleeve. This whole shirt is going to end up being uh, all about uh, Soul Eater. <laughs> There's going to be nothing but Soul Eater stuff. So, this is the moon. And uh, pretty much what I did is I just uh, drew with a uh, charcoal pencil. <clears throat> and then I used my fabric um, markers and uh, fabric paints. Well, actually, just pretty much the fabric markers did the job on this one. All right. Um, and before, let's see, I think, let's see. Right here is the uh, glow in the dark. And I think once I'm done with uh, the sun, I'm going to go ahead and throw this the uh, glow in the dark on the moon. Since you don't see the sun at night. <laughs> but then again, it might be a cool effect to see it on uh, the sun as well. Um, I'm thinking about going out and buying uh, the day glow for the sun as well. Uh, you know, because it, it, day glow comes in different colors and stuff like that. So let me get my source image for the sun. And I found a cute little sun. And we'll go ahead and get started. Um, what I love about these characters and stuff is that they're pretty simple. You can break them down into basic shapes. Uh, the sun is um, really disturbing looking, <laughs> but the moon is even more disturbing looking. Um, let's see. I want to kind of get it so that it all fits within this hoop right here. And it'll kind of wrap around the sleeve a bit if I go even further out. Um, let's see. So about right here, and that'll give me about this much to get the spikes in for the sun. So about like there so if I keep it and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle um, there are circle tools I'm just kind of eyeballing it um, and I use a uh, an embroidery hoop to just keep this in place um, a lot of the materials that I'm using are under ten dollars um, Let's see, the uh, pencil here, I'd say about maybe four or five dollars, but you get like it. You can either buy them individually from an art supply store or um, you can buy them uh, in a pack. Uh, a lot of mine uh, sometimes come from a pack, um, but every now and then I'll, I'll make a trip to the art supply store. It's a, it's a bit of a jaunt for me. Um, and... Uh, Michael's as well. Um, both of them without a car uh, is pretty much a, you know, really a challenge to get to. Uh, let's see. So, anyway, I'm starting off with like the basic shapes. And I'm, I'm pretty much varying where uh, the spikes are. So you'll, you'll see them kind of alternate between um, above and beyond. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, in front of and behind uh, this circle right here like this one right here and you could kind of rub it out or uh, if you're lucky if you have a white eraser you might be able to erase that out but um, what I count on is uh, um, either working my extra lines into the design or they'll end up washing out eventually because I'm not going to put any kind of fixative or anything like that on here. Okay, so like here I am. This one is going above the line and I'm kind of like rubbing that in. And it'll be covered up by the paint, hopefully. <laughs> the lighter colored ones um, are, are hit and miss when it comes to uh, coverage. But if you're ever in doubt, you can always try to cover up with a couple layers of white. And then go over it with the paint. You may get uh, different results. Okay, so this one's going to be on top of. And then this last spike, or last two spikes, this one's going to be behind. And uh, for this sun, the spikes are generally about the same size.
And uh, what you want to do is you want to draw very lightly um, because uh, you, if you're not like 100% committed to that line, you want to draw really lightly. So here's where I am so far. It's, it's kind of a warped circle, um, and that's okay. Uh, you'll, you'll be probably able to see um, and, and compensate for any mistakes that you make. Okay, so I'm going to have him kind of at an angle. Uh, I'm going to do the spike for the nose about right here because this is like the biggest uh, emptiest spot that I've got and it too is about the same size and that mouth yo gotta get the mouth okay so let me turn this a little bit okay and the eyes the eyes will fall in between um, the nose here as a lot of eyes do um, the eye's um, brow kind of bends out and comes in a little bit. So it's kind of like a D shape. It's kind of like a D shape with a little bit of uh, area left open. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It'll touch um, this cone shape. Kind of wrap a little bit, but not by much. And then... Uh, same thing with the D shape and then this will be a D shape and yeah at a lot of artwork um, you don't have to trace because sometimes when you trace you don't notice um, <clears throat> you don't notice certain things um, you're just going by what you see um, or what's been drawn for you and um, you don't want to limit yourself so if you do end up tracing uh, try to take some time out and learn um, about how the shapes are working together and um, once you do that it's kind of like you free yourself not just you know you're not having to limit yourself by uh, what what someone else has drawn um, I don't I'm not completely against tracing, but I am against um, uh, tracing when it comes to, you know, you trace it and say, I drew this. No, you traced it, darling. There's a difference between that. Um, and and it, it, it comes down to ethics, too. It's like, uh, you know, can you honestly say that you drew that? Um, because when you draw, you know, you do have imperfections and things like that. And that's okay. Um, and that's what, where learning comes in. I can't tell you how many times I've had people come up to me and go, Oh, what's that? And I knew that I made it when I stopped hearing that. And I knew that I'd made it when, you know, that I finally uh, accomplished my dream of drawing well. <laughs> when uh, people stopped asking me that question. It's kind of cool when um, people uh, kind of figure it out for themselves. A lot of people like to be spoon-fed and some people are dumb. Uh, so you got to take that with a grain of salt. You know, um, you may have a vision and it may not have translated perfectly onto uh, whatever you were doing. So that just comes with uh, practice. Um, getting uh you know getting your uh, confidence up getting your um work to look like um you know what you what you're trying to do now i'm i'm one of the first people to admit that um i have a hard time um visualizing it in my head uh, uh different things and uh, you'll notice that uh, on this is kind of like a little carrot. These little um, uh, spikes kind of look like carrots to me. And they alternate kind of like uh, tiger stripes. Uh, that, But getting back to, getting back to me. Now, um, it's hard for me to kind of visualize in my head what I, you know, what I want to draw. So uh, I do fall back on source images um, I want to draw a tree okay so what kind of tree 
And so I kind of have an idea of what kind of tree I want. I want a tree with lots of leaves or I want a tree that has no leaves. Um, I want, oh, and don't be afraid to turn your, your paper around to, or whatever you're working with around so that you can get it to, uh, you know, get the lines that you need. <clears throat> you don't have to keep your things straight and then contort your wrists and stuff to do things unnaturally. Um, especially if you're trying to get it right. But anyway, um, I digress. Um, so what I do is I would get a collection of images that kind of fit what I'm, I'm visualizing, combine them together, and, and make it kind of fit the, the idea that I want to do. Um, like say I wanted to draw a bunch of people um, uh, talking on a cell phone. And one thing you can do is look at life and see people talking on a cell phone. Uh, take out a piece of paper and, or a sketchbook, keep your sketchbook near you, and kind of sketch out a gesture pose of what they're doing. You know, uh, what, what, what does their body language look like? You know, things like that. And the people around them. So, like, you've got people talking on the cell phone, but there may be people around them that aren't. You know, so it's like, um, so what I would do if I don't, if I'm not outside and I'm on a, in a pinch and I got to do this or I want to do this. Like, say I want to take Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, all them, all those guys and have them looking like they're talking on their cell phones or communicators or whatever. Um, I would find first the picture of Batman, depending on which outfit I want to go with. Oh, oh, oh. Loosely, I'm going to go ahead and do the center of where the mouth is, the, the teeth are. And then I'm going to go around in like little curved shapes and form the teeth. Just like that. So... For accuracy's sake, I would go and find pictures of Batman, Wonder Woman, you know, everybody that I want to draw. And then I would go and find the pose uh, that I want to use. Now, tracing also takes time. It takes time to uh, size it to where you want it. Um, you know, it takes time to set it all up. So... Uh, there is a there is a bit of work in tracing. Um, you have you sometimes you'll want to print it out, um, and then you'll want to merge uh, things together, um, like maybe do um, a rough sketch, uh, a rough tracing of a pose, and then uh, come back and then add the details, uh, Batman, Wonder Woman, things like that, and. Um, you know, there's uh, times when you can when you do that. Let's see. I, um, you know, and taking source images like that um, and and doing it like that, uh, it's kind of like it's not the same as tracing something like me tracing the sun, and then saying I drew this. You know, I like I took my source image. I can't see who created it. Um, because uh, they, they took it from the show. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, to give them credit and stuff. But if you're, like, combining uh, different images together and stuff like that, and, I mean, the only, the only tracing that I find bad is when you take someone else's work and you claim it as your own. That is bad. Um, I mean, it's one thing to say, hey, I traced this off of um, blah, blah, blah. It's another thing to um, say, I drew this. Or tell somebody, um, this is, uh, you know, it's your work and it's not. And it's, let's see. I didn't draw them at, at the angle that I wanted. I kind of wanted more of an angle, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so you just got to keep your ethics in mind. It's like, do you really, like, say you drew the best thing ever. You, you didn't trace it. You, uh, you know, you busted your ass on it. You worked hard on it. Only to find somebody come along, claim it 
as their own that they drew it when clearly they traced it and one way to find that they traced it is that maybe you incorporated your um, signature into the artwork like say I put Kimberly into one of these and uh, you see Kimberly like I could do K I M real super subtle right and then uh, you see that other person's work and it's like your name is right there it's like really really dog he did that <laughs> you did this right didn't trace it nope um yeah so it's like how would you feel you know it, it, that sort of thing so ethics comes in into play and this is only just my opinions you know you may think that tracing is the best thing in the world or it's the worst sin ever um, and it, you know, it's all on you as far as, um, how you decide to interpret it. Um, if you know that the person traced, um, I mean, you can choose to follow them and learn some tracing techniques, but then again, rarely do people trace on screen. So, um, but you know, uh, you're going through the motions, you're doing your best to learn, um, <clears throat> and I want to try to make lines that are really thick uh, just to make it bold and uh, dark yeah you, you're wor you're breaking your your back to learn something or to you know draw in proportion or you've created an original character and somebody comes along and they just trace your stuff and then they monetize it somehow like they they put it on a t-shirt and they sell it you know, it's not their artwork to sell. And it's like, I should I should have bought that. I should have bought a falcon. I could have bought a falcon. I could have done that with my artwork. You know, that sort of thing. And uh, it's kind of sad. Um, me um, drawing someone else's art, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, too. Um, like... I adore this anime and I, I was sad that you know it kind of ended and I hate that <laughs> you just get into it you fall in love with the characters and the world and everything and then it's all over that's the story of my my childhood when it came to um, 80s cartoons uh, 90s cartoons that were like top-notch and awesome hell the Saturday mornings you know it I don't think I don't think there was ever a Saturday morning that I was not up um, with the first cartoon and just trying to you know just have fun be a kid you know until noon where you're kicked out the house and <laughs> virtually kicked out the house <clears throat> you know things like that but anyway um, yeah, Dexter uh, had uh, asked me about tracing, so I'm, I'm kind of throwing out my two cents and some random thoughts and stuff. But it also comes down to, um, say you trace something, and um, you're so proud of it, but why are you proud? You know, the uh, accomplishment comes from the creation or, you know, having, you know, but it's like... If you learn from it, not not to profit from it, but to learn from it. Like, I learned how to draw blah, blah, blah. I traced it first, and then I kind of studied how uh, my lines were. You know, you learn something from it. That's a little different. If you're studying it, that's a little different. Um, but if you're just doing it, um, like some of these guys, they'll, they'll, they'll trace your stuff, um, take your signature off and then, uh, you know, pass it off on their own, as their own. They're not doing it to learn. They're not doing it, um, for the love of it. They're doing it because they stole it. So there's a difference, I guess, between tracing and stealing. Um, you know, it, or paying homage. 
Like, I love this anime, and I want to show the world how much I love this anime. Um, and uh, so I'm drawing it. I'm drawing uh, elements of it. The ones that, that made me feel something. And, oh my gosh, these... I, I love the character design of, uh, of the sun and the moon. So I had to throw that on here. Um, and it was so funny just to see um, the sun and the moon. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Every now and then it would, it would cut to the sun. It would cut to the moon. Uh, it would cut to um, the academy. It would cut to, you know, and it's just weird to see that, you know, you look up in the sky and you see the sun, like, it looks like it's menacing. Or um, like in a desert, in a desert episode, uh, the sun was was even the sun was hot. It was so it was so damn hot. It was sweating and looked like it was in distress. You know, it, uh, it, I just like that sort of thing, and uh, it just gave it its own charm. And it had teeth. <laughs> I don't know. This is freaking awesome. You know, and it, it just kind of inspires. Um, when I when I draw something, um, or when I'm moved to want to draw something, uh, it's inspired me in some way. It's not a chore. It's I'm drawing for myself, and it feels good. Um, let's see. Now I'm not going to say I never traced. Um, I have traced before. I've traced when I was a kid. But uh, for the most part, you know, a lot of images, I didn't have anything to, what is it called? Um, what's the word? Uh, make it bigger, you know, make it to size. Like, so if I was, if I was drawing on a piece of paper, uh, sometimes, um, you know, I didn't have a light source. I couldn't, you know, I didn't have, I didn't have the things that it would take to trace it. Like tracing paper. <laughs> you know things like that so in a way I, I was kind of forced to have to learn how to draw it <clears throat> and yeah um, learning how to draw something is a chore it takes time uh, but when you finally get to that level where you've got it it's like wow there's nothing like it <clears throat> So I'm, I only think that tracing super bad when you don't want to take the time to learn it. Where you're just trying to profit, you're trying to get some sort of, uh, what do they call it, clout. <laughs> you're trying to get some sort of recognition and praise for something that you just, you know, traced. Um, but there will be times when you'll need to... Um, when you'll need to trace or you know tracing will help um, I know that when I was doing digital art um, I would trace um, uh, styles that I liked like uh, body styles um, I was using flash and um, I needed to get bodies quick so I would um, use a template and um, I would uh, trace that and then I would add, you know, what I needed. It was quick, uh, especially if I was, it wasn't adding any lines. I was just like using a fill color uh, to make the uh, image. But it's uh, another thing to say that it was my, you know, but it wasn't the exact same thing. It wasn't, it was changed up in certain ways. It was a tool. And then I used it for other tools, you know, so it's not like I was trying to profit off of it or anything like that. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's like uh, I like I had I had gotten a whole because I, I needed to make really quick character designs and I liked like Bruce Tim um, did a lot of Batman cartoons and stuff like that. Um, you'll see his um, style a lot and I liked 
uh, some of the body shapes because I needed to do various people. So I printed that out and saved it and then um, I had traced some of them and made them into um, oh! stupid gnats are all in my house it drives me insane um, trace some of them so I can animate them well, I never got that far um, and I've seen people um, take those same templates and they would do different other bodies with them you know it's it's they weren't trying I don't think they were trying to profit I think it was just that it was a quick and easy way to draw um, another character you know but it was in the Bruce Tim uh, style and it was they still look cool but people didn't say hey I drew this you know you, you clearly see that it's somebody else's style um, not that it's a bad thing um, I learned how to draw from looking at other people's styles so um, if I find somebody who's drawn something similar to what I've drawn like like one of my own like original work and stuff like that um, I wouldn't get mad because um, I drew other people's original works and fell in love with them and um, because of them and uh, seeing their styles um, I became a better artist because what I would do is I would like draw Bugs Bunny and then I would I, and I don't think I traced him um, because I think they were pretty warped <laughs> but um, like I would draw characters and and because it's like I hate it when my Saturday mornings would end and um, so I just wanted to keep that that feeling alive all right so there's the Sun and so I would I would draw from that and crap where's my yellow okay um you know and I, I couldn't claim that I created it I mean that's a it's hard it's kind of hard to look at it like that um, you know because clearly I didn't create it but to lie and say that I, I drew it you know when I if I traced it you know I don't know it's there's the ethics involved it's between you and your maker and you and your ethics and stuff but you know a lot of people take stock in that you know it's like well, you didn't, it's beautiful artwork, however, you know, I'm not going to say that this is my son, but, uh, I just love the sun. <laughs> I love the moon more. Oh, okay. Hey, Dexter, how's it going? I just happened to notice you. Um, he says that when he was in elementary school in fourth or fifth grade, the teachers made them trace. Uh, they said that it would make a person a better artist, but he hated it. Okay, so uh, I agree. Uh, the only thing is that there were times when I, yeah, when I was in, in school, it, I think it was about about the same uh, era, uh, fourth or fifth grade, we had to paint birds. I hated painting. And so what they did is they gave us this tracing paper, gave us tempera paints, we traced the bird, and then we were told to paint it. And I sucked at painting. Oh my gosh. I didn't know what I was doing. I had too much paint on the brush. My bird looked more like a blob. I think I was drawing a cardinal or had a cardinal picture. And I hated every minute of it. Um, it was bad. It turned out bad. But yeah, and in a sense, tracing someone else's work or studying someone else's work, it will make you a better artist. Because you'll see elements of the lighting, you'll see elements of, you know, uh, of how they did it. How did they make this happen? It, it, it happens a lot with paintings. You try to figure out how did they get this stroke? How did they make all these strokes turn out as amazing as they, they were? You know, it, it's, and um, I, I've got like, I went on Pinterest and I saw... Um, a person they had taken different styles like Rembrandt style, uh, Degas, uh, different styles and they they showed what their lightings look like 
um, um, and I mean like pointillism you know it's like uh, emulating somebody is different from tracing um, tracing is is you know just uh, up in and just saying that it's yours you know I think that's more of a stealing type of thing than it is a uh, what's the word um, than emulating I don't know so what am I learning from doing this um, well one of the things I'm doing is imparting some knowledge that um, you can draw virtually anything from from just starting off with basic shapes and then seeing what those shapes um, look like in relation to something that you see every day so there's you can learn from it if you give yourself a chance to but certainly don't say that oh this is my original artwork I'm not gonna say that this Sun or this moon are my original creations I can never say that and I can I can't say that um, but it does inspire me I don't know it just it, I, it, uh, tracing is a double-edged sword when you're stealing the artwork I think I think that's where you cross the line is when you ultimately lie to yourself and others and say that you were the the sole creator of this thing I don't I don't know okay so I'm gonna kind of give this the same treatment my yellows are not up to snuff um, as far as using the Arteza markers I think I've used this to their <laughs> to their fullest they're about done yeah this guy is dry 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 yeah and it's 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 going all into my yeah, it's so dry, nothing's coming out, and it's scratching at my my artwork here in the jacket. It's making fuzz appear. Yeah, this is so dry. Okay, so I'm going to have to move on to uh, paints. But before I do that, well, actually, that's not a bad idea. Let me get a brush real quick. Do, do, do. But um, a lot of opinions, watercolor and acrylic, um, I like acrylics. Um, I'm not sure I like watercolor. Um, I don't like the unpredictability of it. Um, like with acrylics, you can, you can control it a lot better. I'm so sick of these damn nets. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, with uh, acrylics, you can control it. Um, markers, you can control them uh, to a certain extent, depending on the type of paper and how much, uh, how wet it, it comes out. Um, yeah, but watercolor, uh, that's, I don't know. I, I don't like how light it is sometimes, too. I guess I, uh, from using cheap watercolors, um, they always seem like they were like pastels, and I always hated pastels. I always liked I like colors that are are vibrant and 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 not that pastels aren't vibrant but they were always so baby looking like what what's the word um like uh soft they're very soft and I always liked bold colors um until I got older and then I'm like okay I need to tone this down <laughs> I need to tone it down But I do like uh, acrylics, um, only because this is it's similar to what I use on uh, t-shirts. Um, I could control it. Um, I like the thickness of it. Uh, it covered the coverage is really good. I hide my mistakes. I I tried using um, I tried using some watercolors. I, I never went out and purposely bought a tube of watercolor um, and maybe it, 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 it is maybe the choice of colors that I used maybe it was the choice of uh, you know the cheap medium 
because I'm sure that it, I've seen some really gorgeous stuff um, made with watercolor and I couldn't believe it because it was it was like a thick I, I guess you can make it as thick or as thin as you need to um, to get it to flow and I didn't know that about watercolors I always saw it in a pan oh acrylic dries too fast I didn't know that I, I don't use it very often um, drying fast is one of the things that I needed um, especially if I'm on the bus <laughs> and I need to uh, I'm like I don't want to stop uh, doing what I'm doing and switch buses but I, I need this thing to dry so I can put it back in my bag like right now I've got the uh, All Might jacket in my my bag Let's see, before I move on to the other sides, while this is all wet, I'm going to see if I can merge some of the orange on here and see if I can get it to spread. Oh yeah, I imagine that it does. Um, uh, that watercolor takes practice. Everything really um, takes practice. It's just that you got to want to do it. you got to want to give it that time. And um, a lot of people want stuff now. And I'm guilty of that. I want I want to be good now. I don't want to wait. <laughs> um, I want to make this now. I want to make this look good now. Um, but that is what it is. Let's see if I can go ahead and get away with this. Yeah, the down downside of white um, jackets and stuff is that they're white. So what I'm going to try to do is um, add as many details and things like that to this so that um, I can, uh, you know, maybe hide p potential dirtiness <laughs> that may arise. I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's the downside to being having a white jacket. You you'll see every dirt and dust particle and stuff like that on it. Oh, watercolor brushes that hold water, um, like something similar to this, like a, a water brush. I think these things are pretty awesome too. You can fill it with whatever you want. Yeah, I have, uh, let's see, I have one brush here that um, is filled with, um, what is that called? What's that stuff called? Mona Lisa paint thinner? Oh, it's noxious. And I, I'm probably going to get cancer in a few years uh, because of it. But uh, the convenience is there for it. It's inside the brush itself. It's not like a watercolor brush or like this uh, water brush. Yeah, when I saw the water brush, I thought that was kind of like a cool idea. I hated the shape of it. Um, but, you know, I you get over it once you uh, start to use it. What? You haven't used it yet, Dexter? What? You and your art supplies, dude. I, I, I wish I had, like, access to your junk. I'm like, oh, man. But then again, you know, I have to have the time to uh, play with it. It's all, in, like, life gets in the way. So it's like, draw your ass off as a kid as much as you can. Draw like the wind, because you don't know when that time is going to be taken away from you. <coughs> or actually, you will. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you have the touch five markers, right? You have, um, you have the water brush. It's like, what are you doing? What are you waiting for, man? Oh my gosh. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> oh, I need to be in, I need to be let into the vault. <laughs> let me in, let me in. I'll be good. 
Yeah, if I if I had my chance um, to get like dream art supplies and stuff, I'd definitely like just jump all over it. But the downside is like, oh, yeah, you miss those days when you can just draw for hours. Yeah, life gets in the way. You gotta feed the bulldog. Um, and sometimes art's not the thing to do it. <laughs> if you're lucky and you can find buyers and, and uh, Patreons and Patreons and, and whatnot to buy your work, that's a blessing. Um, but hopefully you, you don't become like me who gets like attached to their junk. Um, there, there were times when I would make something like absolutely fabulous for something at somebody else and then find that I want this. I want this. Oh my gosh, it turned out so good. I want it, I want it, I want it. I don't want to give it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but money changes things. Uh, somebody else was telling me the same thing. Um, it's different when you are drawing for money or doing artwork for money rather than just for yourself. Um, it's like it, it just changes the element of it all. And um, I came across uh, uh, like artists when I was working at the Tribune. Uh, they would do art for you have 30 minutes on your lunch break at work to practice. Yeah, but when you get home, how much time do you have? Like right now, um, would you have time to uh, to draw or to sketch or anything like that? Yeah, uh, Dexter is trying to draw on his lunch breaks and stuff like that. See, that's dedication. I used to do that stuff too because. I needed crayon therapy. <laughs> I worked at Michael's surrounded by art supplies that I couldn't use. <laughs> yeah, I needed crayon therapy. <laughs> or if I was lucky, uh, I could use them. Um, um, and, uh, you know, along with uh, whoever's giving like a lesson. But I was always working. Always working, always working. Oh man, none. You have no time, huh? Dang. Yeah. See, life is hard, hard, because you 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 got to make that money. It's like, and if you um, if you don't have the time, because like you sometimes you may have kids, uh, pets. You know, this, it's having that dedicated space. It's like once you get home, you're tired. You want to, you know, all you want to do is just like sleep. <laughs> you know, because uh, if you're anything like me, I get up at like four uh, to get ready. Um, Got to eat breakfast. Um, and I, I compromised uh, because I, during the week I had no time, uh, you know, and I was tired. I'd get home uh, from work and I had this, you know, I, I, after riding the bus for two hours and, you know, trying to get home, I'm riding my bike for 30, 45 minutes to, to racing to get to the, the bus stop um, of a bus that, that goes closest to my house. It's just like, uh, by the time I get home, all I want to do is eat, sleep, and, oh, you poor thing. Yeah, he's, he says that right now it's uh, 4.43 in the morning and he can barely keep his eyes open. I hear you. And um, I have no coffee in me, so right now I'm like running on fumes until I get to work where the coffee is abundant. God, I love my job. <laughs> uh, yeah, my boss likes coffee too, so um, it's like unlimited coffee. Love it. Oh my gosh. He saw the amount of cream that I had in my, uh, in my, my, uh, cup. And he's like, oh, oh, you like, uh, yeah, I like my cream. <laughs> oh, okay, so you get off work at 3.30 in the morning. Good Lord, God bless you. So you're probably sleeping all day long, or at least trying to get things accomplished. And who's got time? Oh, you poor thing. Yeah, it's hard. Life gets in the way so much when it comes to art. So if, if you're a kid and you're watching this, 
definitely draw now get good now because by the time you are an adult uh by the time that you are uh you know in school out of school um it, you're done you it, unless this is your profession you have you will have zero time if you're lucky you'll have um especially if you're only providing for, you know if you're providing for yourself just do as much art as you can as hard as you can as fast as you can learn as much as you can and uh if you if you can try to fit it into your life somewhere it, it's hard because uh, i remember as a kid i looked at adults and i was like man you guys are boring and I, it's hard to, it, it, but I didn't think that, you know, my mom is spending 12 hour shifts working so that my fat ass can sit at home and draw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if uh, you stop doing it, you get rusty. You forget, you're, you, you, you forget how things are supposed to be. So you have to relearn it all over again. And I agree. Um... I had I hadn't done uh, any caricatures of uh, people in a long time, and uh, just for giggles on uh, my job when I was at the Tribune um, before it's it shut down, uh, I had uh, on my lunch hour drawn a friend of mine's mom just for giggles, and uh, I started getting it all back again. You know, it, it's just like. I, I had stopped drawing almost completely because I had to work and I had my car then too but it's like I was still mentally exhausted yeah but this if you can if you can fit it in somewhere in your life something where it's yours it's you know it it's like uh, like I said crayon therapy you know it's like <laughs> drawing drawing people <laughs> getting you know in different ways and stuff like that whether it's uh good or for bad you know it, it you gotta find some way to express yourself creatively uh creatively 15 years okay so he says you get really rusty everybody needs a rooftop over their over their head yep yep you've got to work Yep, yep. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to turn it into a career. But it's it's not easy. You've got to eat. Um, I like eating. <laughs> you see, you see these wrists. <laughs> this is a this is the wrist of a woman who likes to eat. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I mean, I I don't want a lot. You know, all I, you know, I, I'm not even like money hungry. I just want enough money so that I can live on, you know. Um, and then I, I was talking to somebody and they're like, oh, retirement's going to be so boring and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, drawing all day. Are you kidding? Watching cartoons? What? Let me retire, boy. Oh, my gosh. That's my second childhood. Oh man, but yeah, yeah, that that's kind of like a dream to be able to uh, relax, not have to, you know, fight traffic to get anywhere and to do anything. Oh, that's cool, the Art Institute. It's a famous school, famous school. So, uh, did you not like the career? Or what what stopped you? Uh, this is Dexter. He he says that he was uh, he had a career at uh, at work once. You know, working with art. And once he graduated from the art institute, what happened? What happened? There's a lot of competition for jobs too. But my biggest thing is. Um, you know, working with art, it's like, I want to do my stuff. I don't want to do somebody else's stuff. If I work as an animator, um, I'm going to want to do my own work. I want to make my own characters. 
I don't know. Um, it'd be cool to see, uh, you know, beyond part of a project and making things come to life. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is um, I'm merging and softening up the orange. Uh, in certain places on uh, the sun, it's got um, bits of orange and it's not like it's showing up so much on the camera so I'm going to make it a little bit more a little darker so you, it'll show up a little bit more so I guess I guess my advice to those who trace is add something else to it don't just trace it and say I'm done no trace it and maybe give it a different color trace it and give it some designs trace it and bring something new to the table something unique to the table something that's you to the table so not only uh, you know if you if you feel that you have to trace because you just feel like you don't have the talent and or the time to learn Oh, yeah, yeah, you got to keep your skills up. Um, yeah, that's another downside is like there's a lot of competition out there. Uh, and um, people learning different techniques, especially like with Photoshop and things like that. Photo manipulations and things like that. And that was one of the things I was scared of, that I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be marketable. Uh, because you learn certain things from school, like an art school. And they may be already obsolete by the time you get out to the field. So art schools need to stay relevant. They need to stay on top of the game. And it's not always easy. Uh, my art school that I had gone to, um, international, not International Academy of Design, it was um, uh, Tampa, I think it was called Tampa Tech? Oh, Remington. They changed their name to Remington College. Um, my art, my art school had um, would send their teachers out to seminars and and things like that, um, so they would learn the latest techniques um, to stay relevant to the, the the classroom. So they would come back and they'd show us what they learned, and so we were fortunate for that. However, um, just depending on where you go. Um, you may find uh, other techniques that you never even were exposed to. I have to use a different brown. I need a, a something that actually says brown. Yeah, this Arteza, I was hoping that it would have more neutral colors. Um, it has it has like six greens. And uh, this brown here is coffee. Coffee is like close to black. Um, the other one that they have, let's see, oh, I must have put it in my bag. Yeah, the other one, um, uh, where's my other brown? I gotta have another brown. Okay, I'm gonna have to use a different brown. Ah, uh, it's called mudging. Okay. And we'll just make it work. Anyway, yeah, 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 once you get out of school, you're kind of on your own. You're going to have to be, keep your skills relevant. Um, so it would, it would always be best to um, hook up with people who um, were, you know, in the same field as you were, but also um, be affiliated with folks who, um, you know, had connections. You know who uh, were had the inside scoop on stuff, so it, you didn't want to get left behind. But what's funny is that um, I had uh, didn't did like a little bit of an internship uh, with someone, and I showed him some new tricks. He was working with Photoshop, and uh, he was a whiz when it came to PowerPoint, and he would do amazing things with PowerPoint. See, now they're using colored pencils with markers. Never seen that back in your day. Yeah, 
yeah and now um now it's like all the photo manipulation and the uh was it the digital painting we didn't we didn't have we didn't do digital painting when i was in art school um we did photo manipulation um watercolors with markers yeah um yeah yeah and uh there's a guy here on youtube who um would do black and white portraits uh using a dry brush technique and i had never seen anything like it but i loved his results um so i ended up um uh, doing a couple portraits like his uh, the downside is that it was oils and I didn't know what the hell I was doing with oils. Alrighty, let's see. Uh, now I'm down to the eyes and the teeth. I need to fill this in with black and uh, maybe, oh, this will work. Let's see. So let me see if we can bring that closer. Let's see. Yeah, but um, definitely, it, it's hard to keep up with the latest advancements. But you know, it you know, if your job depends on it, definitely you got to. Especially if you're teaching people. And uh, that's one of the things I like about YouTube is that, um, you know, people share how uh, they're doing some of their techniques. At least some of them do. Some of them just do the speed drawing thing and rant and rave about things. I don't know. But, uh... But, uh, you know, and, and they don't tell you how they're doing it. You have to find out like about 50 videos later um, or before how they do what they do. But I, I'm all about trying to stay in the inexpensive range because you're, you can make some really great artwork without having, without having to spend a, a bunch of money or buy like fancy art supplies to get the same uh, effect. But yeah, alcohol markers, yeah, it changed my religion too. But they're, uh, the ones that I love are, are super expensive. The, and I'd have to buy them on sale. I'd have to have like the craziest coupons. And then by the time I had my coupons together, they had to be in stock. And they were never in stock. Those were the Copics. Okay, I don't want to use this one for the teeth. I want to try to keep these relatively thin bold but thin yeah if you're drawing on uh, t-shirts uh, you want to stay bold you want to go ahead and get into the tooth of the t-shirt um, if you start seeing fuzz balls appear like um, on mine here I've got like a lot of fuzz balls because the uh, markers were drying out you want to avoid that because you don't want it to wear out so badly that it'll cause a hole and you want to stay uh, you want to get it as dark as you can uh, so that it can withstand uh, numerous washes uh, so far um, the Artezas are really good um, they're still vibrant even after washing uh, but um, I, they haven't stood the test of time yet like the four year mark type of thing or even a year mark yet so I want to keep using them um, I do like the effects that I get the only downside is I don't have a big selection so I have to um, I have to cheat on them <laughs> yeah another uh, downside is that when you're favorite art supply uh, becomes obsolete and it's hard to find the equivalent anywhere mm. 
Yeah, it, that, and I whine because of these. I, I love these, and they're now no longer being made. Yep, yep, that's the alcohol marker for you. Uh, where you uh, put down um, a, a color, and it's the color that you want. <clears throat> but if you go over it one more time, it darkens it. Yeah, it, that's an art form in itself on how to use those things. Um, like, how do you coat the whole thing without leaving any streaks? Um, how do you coat the whole thing without... Oh, yeah, I like, I like Prismacolor pencils. But I didn't know that old Prismacolor pencils did the same thing where it would get darker on you. If you go over it twice or something like that. All right. Okay, it's six o'clock. Uh, yeah, it's been a struggle this week. Um, a bus, uh, my bus has been uh, detouring from one spot to another, and so I have to uh, have to travel a little bit further uh, to get to a different stop to catch the the detoured bus. And it's cold out today. This is Florida, and it is 45 degrees out right now. Okay, and I'm just adding some brown around. Yeah, this nose, you can still see the white in there. I want to go ahead and uh, try to overcome that. Let's see, what colors do I have? I thought I had a brown nearby. Ooh, here's the other brown. This is chocolate. Let's see if it's how this is going to work on here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, another thing you got to keep an eye out for is if, um, if your markers are old. Um, some people will sell you markers that have been on the shelf uh, for quite a while and by the time you get them they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, they'll dry up fast or they've leaked or um, you know you run that risk there as well. I don't know but um, let's see so we've got I think it's coming along it's really subtle in the video, but a lot of this here is orange. So let me see if I can fix or make this a little darker. And around the mouth. And then soften it up a bit with the yellow. I don't want to use that one. I like this one. This one really gets it grinding in there. Yeah, the markers. Um, yeah, the markers definitely love Prismacolors, but then they'll now they've got other ones that are uh, better than Prismacolors, more expensive as well. And you'll see uh, the results from those. Like uh, one of the people that I love watching is like Heather Rooney, and uh, you know how like you hate to compare yourself to other people. It's like, man. I can't watch this chick anymore. Her stuff looks so good. Uh, I can't watch this. And she doesn't talk. She only does her videos. Um, there's only like a couple videos where she uh, talked. Um, and I can, I can understand if you're like really wicked busy and you don't have time to communicate with your, um, your audience. But it's like, I don't know. It, it kind of added to her mystique too. Ooh, really? I didn't know that. I didn't know Prismacolors. Um, I didn't know those guys were toxic. Oh, shoot. That adds a different element. And that was the old, uh, when they, when they own Barrel? Or do they still own Barrel? 
uh, yeah, uh, Dexter um, remembers that the old Prismacolor barrel pencils were very, they were very good and then they're better than the ones now. They didn't break easily, but they were toxic. And you, he used to break out when using them. Oh, wow. The, the things you suffer for in your art, man. Oh, that's awful. my art is killing me I, 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 I that would drive me insane that I wouldn't be able to use my favorite art supplies because it's gonna kill me and you know or, or make me sick or immediately make me break out that would suck yeah for something like that I'd definitely get out of the game or, or change mediums definitely I shouldn't have put this mess so dark there we go. Oh, get out. What? How do you still have pencils from the 80s? Oh my gosh. I don't think I have anything left from the 80s. Okay, so I'm, I'm throwing yellow around this orange area, um, around the nose here. Uh, right here it's like wicked dark, because it's like you're looking up at the sun and this is the, this is the one spike that's like you're, that's facing you. And then it's like orange right here. And then orange in other places. Okay, I think I got this. Okay, and uh, around the teeth area, I don't want that too dark. Oh, oh, that's right. I was going to throw some uh, glow-in-the-dark stuff on this. What's cool is that it, it goes on um, clear. Let me put... Where's my brush? Where's my brush? Uh, where'd you go, brush? I just had you. I used you here. Here you are. It's funny, I have this uh, other glow-in-the-dark. Oh, they're nubs. Of course they are. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, wow. Let's see. I have this glow-in-the-dark paint that I had nearby. It was always funky because it's like uh, at night it would just like light up. <laughs> the bottle would light up. Um, let's see. Not this one. It was way bigger than this. And I would do the same thing with the moon. I should do the teeth, too. I should just do the moon. Oh, well. We'll see how it looks. Yeah, this is uh, this is a really great time to be uh, an artist because you've got YouTube, you've got you know you've got schools, you've got books galore, um, you've got Amazon where you can find more of those books galore, and for less uh, at sometimes like on Half.com or something like that. I mean, if you want to learn something there's absolutely there's almost no excuse um on you know there's no hiding where you know no hiding the knowledge if you want it it's out there in uh nine times out of ten it's already been done before but if you can find something that nobody else has done uh that's definitely different
in a second I'm going to turn off my light just to see what it looks like and whether or not I should do the I'll do the eyes right here and just to see what it looks like Make sure it's nice and covered. And we'll do the nose too. Or maybe I should have left the nose alone. <laughs> oh well. Maybe I start. I should start um, signing my name in the day glow paint or in this this kind of paint, the uh, glow in the dark paint. Okay, I think I got everything here. Make sure I got this area here. So the only thing that shouldn't be lit up is that black of the eyes. Okay, all right. Let that charge a bit. I'm going to turn off a couple of these lights and see how it looks. Ugh. And this one. Now I'm, I'm think I'll turn off my screen too, just to see if that makes a difference. I won't be able to see it. <laughs> Hold up for a sec. Okay, I'm in complete darkness, and I kind of see the sun. I can see the paint just fine. Let's see. Maybe I need to to add another coat when it dries. I definitely got to add the teeth and then I think that might make a difference okay all right I'm turning all the lights back on uh, if I can find them <laughs> okay there we go one two and then the screen okay I don't think you guys could see it at all. <laughs> that sucks. Okay. I almost want to go back to sleep. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll let this, uh, I'll let this dry and then, uh, I could hasten it by using my my thingy there. Let's see. I might have to find my other um, paint and see if that'll work instead. Or maybe it just needs to charge up a little higher. Um, let's see. Yeah, because the bottle glue in, uh, glowed in the dark. <laughs> glue in the dark. <laughs> Let 
me see one more time. Yep, all I had was the library too. Oh yeah, look at those teeth. Oh dog. Oh yeah, it's looking badass now. Um, I don't know if you can see it, um, but I gotta add more to this teeth. Yeah, my paintbrush is lit up. Yeah, that looks badass. I think I'll uh, keep adding around. I don't. I guess I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep adding around the sun uh, spikes. Oh yeah, this looks cool. <laughs> this is badass. Okay, let me turn my lights back on. All right. Here we go. My monitor's like, what are you doing, Kim? Yeah, I definitely need more here. But the teeth really stood out. I think because it didn't have any paint underneath it, I think that made a difference too. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Did we just not have enough to trace from <laughs> back in our day? Uh, so we had to learn how to how to draw and and whatnot. I don't know. Oh yeah, this is cool. Now this is a dimensional um, glow-in-the-dark paint, so I got to get it nice and flat. I don't need any texture on this, but the teeth came out really good. Yeah, around this area it was really faint. Okay, so now that I've got our sun, I've got my moon, I'm not sure what I want to put on here next. Um, I'm thinking I might throw in the skull. Um, I forget his name. The headmaster. Um, and then I'll remember his name by the time uh, tomorrow comes. It makes me want to do another superhero. What I'd like to do, if I if my paints could handle it, is do like um, a superhero uh, with the lights on, and then when you turn it off, turn off the lights, then you see the villain. <laughs> That would be cool. It'll end up being like a hundred percent in uh, in these paints here. Okay, all right. Okay, so I've oh shoot, it's six twenty. I gotta get going. Okay, hey you guys, have a great one, and I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, same bat time, possibly same bat channel. More, more than likely, de definitely the same bat channel. And you guys have a great one. Thanks for joining me. And um, let me know what you'd like to see on this jacket. Uh, what you think I should draw next. Um, and also, uh, I think what I'll probably be doing is like the headmaster. But I'm thinking about doing him on the back of my, uh, on the back of the hoodie. Uh, 
and to have him take up this area right here on the hoodie um, back here so like it would be like the skull um, shape right here or have it in the front I don't know I haven't decided yet but I think it would be more right here okay you guys take care and we'll see you in the next video um, like and subscribe if you liked it and subscribe if you'd like to see more uh, take care bye bye